If you have two keyframes on a clip, but you decide to shorten that clip, where did that keyframe go and how do you get it back? Easy. In the effects control panel, go to the burger menu and then click on pin to clip. Now you can zoom out and you can easily find that keyframe and you now have full freedom to move this keyframe even if it's outside of the in and out points on your timeline. And just like this, we're going to learn eight more hidden features in Premiere Pro. If you're using markers in your projects, you're already ahead of the game. Now, if you aren't, let me know in the comments so I can make a video to help you out because they are incredibly useful until you have to cut something out of your timeline, you close the gaps and the markers have not moved. So now they've become completely useless. Why don't they just move? Here's how to fix that. In the top menu, go to markers and then click on ripple sequence markers. Now they should travel with your clips as you change things on your timeline. The next tip might trigger some nightmares. I'm sorry. Let's say we're editing and suddenly we notice that there is a gap on our timeline. We're missing an audio file and we've already edited so much that it's too late to hit control or command Z to get it back. Simply put your playhead on the clip that is missing the audio. This also works for video, by the way, and then hit F on your keyboard. Now it will open up in the source monitor and then just grab the audio from there, put it back on the timeline and make sure to link it by hitting Ctrl or Command L. If you want to learn more shortcuts like the F shortcut, which is something that I really, really recommend because it speeds up your editing workflow so much, which also just makes it a lot easier and a lot more fun to edit. I recommend to pick something up like an editing keyboard or an editing cover if you already have a keyboard and you don't want to get a new keyboard because this is basically a cheat sheet for editors. Every key shows you the shortcut in Premiere Pro. Now they're also available for Final Cut or for DaVinci. I learned my way through shortcuts through a keyboard like this from editor's keys this one specifically is from editor's keys and it's made in collaboration with premiere gal if you don't know who she is you should because her name is literally premiere gal premiere pro gal she knows everything about premiere pro it is just a great way to learn new shortcuts because all you have to do is look down and you'll learn a new shortcut every single time that you're editing and you don't have to google super fast highly recommended. There will be a link in the description if you want to get one because now they are 15% off with the link below. All right, let's continue triggering more nightmares because I'm having fun. Here's the scenario. Your client has come back to you and has requested to cut certain things out of the edit. This could either be bigger chunks or just single frames. You've done the work, you re-export the video and you find out that there are black frames. Super annoying. Now to avoid this altogether or to fix this so you do not have to write down every time code where there is a black frame, go back to the edit, then go to the top sequence menu and click on go to gaps. This will show you exactly where the gaps are, but even better in that same menu, we can click on close gaps to automatically close all of those gaps on the timeline. Here's a bonus tip for you. Since we've been talking about shortcuts, you can also create your own custom shortcuts. So let's say that you are closing gaps in every single project before you export your video, you can attach a shortcut to it. Go to Premiere Pro, keyboard shortcuts, and then search for close gaps. Now attach this to a key that makes sense to you, hit okay, and now you can press that specific key or combination of keys to close the gaps without having to go to the menu every time. We've been talking about how to speed up our editing workflow, but what about speeding up Premiere Pro? Now every time that you create a project in Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro will start creating these temporary files, also known as cache. The more project you will work on, the more of these files will be created and stacked up and hence will slow down Premiere Pro. If you start to notice this, it is time to clean up your cache and there's two ways to do this. For the first method, we have to have Premiere Pro closed. Then when we open Premiere Pro, immediately hold Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows to open up this Reset Options window. Here you can choose to reset the app preferences, but we'll just stick the box in front of Clear Media Cache Files. Now two, which is way better, we can also do this automatically. In Premiere Pro, go to Premiere Pro, Settings, and Media Cache. Here you can choose to delete the cache after X amount of time or after a certain size. One really important tip though, only delete the cache once you're done with a project, because otherwise Premiere Pro is gonna take a bit of time to recreate all of those temporary files, which is not too big of a deal, but definitely wait till you're done with a project and you've archived a project before you delete the cache. If you ever copy assets or files from one project to the other project, or you're working in more than one project at the same time, chances are you'll end up with duplicates. Now this is another way that Premiere Pro can slow down and it also just makes your projects messy because why would you need duplicates in one project? Now, in order to get rid of these, we're gonna go to edit and then click on consolidate duplicates. 
An extra bonus tip, once you're done with your project, go back to the edit menu and then click on remove unused to really clean up your project. If you're anything like me, you would import all of these folders with all of these files and then you end up with really big projects even though you haven't even used half of those files. So this is also a little note to myself. The next tip is really helpful if you or your client decides to switch up some clips or insert a clip in between two clips. Now at first this feels very annoying because what you have to do now is you have to move the clips away, you have to make a big enough space Space, so this other clip can go in there and then you would have to move them back there. No, because what we're going to do is we're going to hit control or command if you're on a Mac and drag the clip in between two clips. This clip will now be inserted on the timeline without overwriting any of the other clips. Now, would you have already known this tip if you had an editor's keys keyboard? Yes. <laughs> Link in the description. All right. Hands up if you like audio editing. I thought so. In recent years, Premiere Pro has made editing audio a lot easier, and especially when they recently introduced a feature that will automatically tag your audio files as dialogue, music, sound effects, or ambience. This feature is called Auto Tag, and you can find it in the Essential Sound Panel. Once the tagging is complete, you can click on a tag, and then all of the clips tagged with that category, let's say dialogue, will be highlighted. This makes it a lot easier to enhance the audio in a project. And speaking of enhancement, if you want to enhance your speech and make it sound like it comes from a very expensive microphone, you can. Now that we have auto-tagged all of our dialogue clips, we can improve the quality by clicking on the button Enhance in the Essential Sound Panel. Next to this button, we'll see the progress. And as you can see, you can also add less or more enhancement by using this slider. Now, honestly, this feature is a game changer and I use it in all of my videos. The next tip is all about AI in Premiere Pro because it is getting better and better, which means that it's more fun and easier than ever to create good videos. You can learn all about that in this video right here and don't forget to check out Editor's Keys.